Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hello, this is Taylor. I got a lot of comments on my what I spend in a week here in New York City video that my lifestyle looks a lot more expensive than it actually is. And for the most part, I would agree. Oh, would you know? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> Bet. So I thought it'd be fun to outline the main ways that I try to save money living in this expensive ass city and the main money principles that I follow. You may or may not notice that this video is titled as a 25 year old while my what I spend in a week video was as a 24 year old. I did indeed turn 25 a couple days ago. Thank you. And while it was a joyous weekend celebrating with some of my best friends. One, go! Ah! It was also a very sad day as I am now too old for Leonardo DiCaprio. Also keep in mind for this video that this is New York City, the most expensive city in this country. So if I refer to something as cheap, I'm speaking totally in relative terms. Almost nothing here is actually cheap except for transportation. And this will also be pretty Manhattan focused because that's where I live. It's also the most expensive borough, but largely these tips should span across all five boroughs of New York City. Boring. What was that? Just get started already. I am, we're gonna break it into categories. <laughs> of course you are. So as I was breaking it down into categories, I realized that there are a few overarching principles that really drive my relationship with money that are ultimately gonna be the things that save me the most in the long run, rather than any single decision I make with regards to these spending categories. So let's start with those principles before breaking it down into the categories of housing, transportation, experiences, and stuff. All right, so first and foremost, while I do love saving deals, saving money does not define my lifestyle. As shown in my What I Spend in a Week video, I happily splurge on things that I value the most, which for me are experiences and travel, convenience, saving time, safety, and a couple material things. While at the same time saving money in areas that don't really make a difference to me if I go the cheaper route. Someone left a comment on my New York City summer day video where I was all giddy to show you guys the deals that I found at Target. Comments said something like, you know, this girl spends at least 10,000 per month on rent, but gets super excited about deals at Target. That makes no Sense. It didn't take offense to the comment. I could definitely see why some people would see a disconnect there, but it definitely got me thinking. First of all, I don't spend anything near that on rent, but it just so should not be all or nothing in my opinion. Just because someone splurges in one area of their life does not mean that every aspect of their lifestyle should match that. So for me, I spend a lot on experiences. You know, I travel a lot because I value that. But when it comes to things that I don't care a lot about, let's use those mason jars as an example, the marginal enjoyment that I personally get from finding a good deal on them at Target is higher than the marginal enjoyment that I would get from owning higher quality mason jars from Williams-Sonoma. So anyway, just an illustration of how it does not have to be all or nothing. The next principle is probably the most important for me, and it's that I live below my means and avoid lifestyle inflation. For those who don't know, lifestyle inflation is simply the idea that when your income increases, your spending also increases. Now for full transparency, I personally don't have to consciously think about it that much. I was just hardwired this way. Um, I guess that's the way I was raised. But when my income increased, my spending did not increase, at least not proportionally, and that is my status quo behavior. So an example of this, another comment that I get pretty often is, oh, yet another person who has to live with a roommate to afford living in New York City. I definitely don't have to. I just really, really want to. In fact, I came to the realization recently that I never want to live alone, literally ever. That's just me. I also just love this apartment. But anyway, what do I do with this leftover money from my increased income if I'm not spending it? You perhaps guessed it, brings me to my final principle of investing. It's also my status quo to invest whatever money I don't need immediately accessible. So for example, when I started taking on sponsorships in a lot of my videos, I immediately invested all of the money that I made from that new income stream because I did not need it liquid. So these are the money principles that I follow. They're not revolutionary, but you can see how following the basic ideas of living below your means, avoiding lifestyle inflation, investing a lot, and picking and choosing where you like a little splurge can take you a very long way. Also, I think you guys know that none of this is to brag, I do not take for granted the fact that I even have income streams by doing something that I love, so. All right, now let's break it down into actual categories. So let's start with housing, which is the biggest expense for most Americans. In fact, in 2020, 23% of Americans spent at least 50% of their income towards housing, which is a pretty steep percentage to pay, and 46% of Americans spent at least 30% of their income towards housing. So housing is where I save the most money, again, relative to what other people in Manhattan and even other people in my building pay. Some of the ways I save money here cannot be replicated like locking in a price in a rent-stabilized building when rental inventory was still quite high because of COVID. 
but some of the things can be replicated. First and foremost, my flex wall. We have talked about it before here on my channel, but putting up this flex wall in this large one bedroom apartment has been an amazing way to save money. The benefit of doing a flex wall in a large one bedroom apartment versus just looking for a cheaper two bedroom is, let's say you have a $3,600 budget. Assuming you put that whole $3,600 towards whatever it is you find, a $3,600 one bedroom is gonna be a lot nicer than a $3,600 two bedroom. In our case, it's in a safe luxury high rise apartment with a pool, gym, 24 hour doorman, the whole shebang. And because of the way that the building is shaped, my roommate and I both have corner bedrooms with lots and lots of windows. Of course, the living space becomes smaller, but my roommate and I both valued having large bedrooms with a lot of sunlight coming in versus a large living space. So I actually highly recommend this flex wall method. It has worked great for us, especially now with the median rental price for a one bedroom in Manhattan reaching an all time high of $4,200 this month. Cutting costs on housing is gonna be a must for most residents in the city. And because housing is more than likely gonna be your largest expense, it is certainly where I would start. I will say though, definitely check with your landlord or building manager before putting one up. My roommate and I checked with our leasing agent beforehand to make sure we could put up this non-pressurized bookcase wall that we have. Another small tip in this category that's not always gonna work, but it did for my roommate and I is negotiating. Because rental inventory was so high when we signed for our place, we were able to negotiate over the phone for a free month of rent plus having our monthly amenities fee waived. But like I said, that's not always gonna work, especially like right now when rental inventory is super low and demand is back up, landlords will just not be giving concessions more than likely. But negotiation is something to keep in mind and doesn't usually hurt to ask. Next category, and this is a big one for New York City, food. My favorite kind of cheap food in New York City is hitting the like button for zero dollars. No, that doesn't make sense. So for me, I have tiers on how I save money on food here in New York City. So top tier, I think we all know that the number one way to save money on food is by buying groceries and cooking at home. Seems simple enough, right? Not so fast. The logistics of buying groceries here in New York City can be a bit more involved than what meets the eye. Only 22% of residents here in Manhattan own a car, which is actually a bit higher than I expected. But nevertheless, Four out of five people not owning a car means that buying groceries, especially in bulk, can be a pretty difficult task. So here's how I save money doing it. One way I do it is by ordering groceries via Amazon Fresh, not sponsored. Be a hell of a sponsor though, am I right? Hit me up, Daddy Bezos. But with a Prime account, you get free delivery on orders over $50, either delivered the same day or the next day, and it gets sent directly to your doorstep, even if you're many floors up in a high rise like I am. I know that sounded like an infomercial, but you cannot beat the convenience of having it delivered literally directly to your doorstep for free. And Amazon Fresh prices are also pretty reasonable. Also, since the free delivery kicks in at the $50 mark, I'm incentivized to buy more food in bulk, so I will typically order groceries that will last me a while. And even if you don't hit that $50 mark, the delivery fee is $9.99, which in my opinion, is still totally worth it, worth the convenience. If the alternative is walking a ways to get the groceries and then lugging them all back on your arms until they turn blue and you get all sweaty, believe me. I have done it. <laughs> so this is my top tier money saver for food. If I cook a bunch of chicken and pasta and broccoli and meal prep for the week, each serving can cost as little as $2 and that's about as cheap as it gets. And also within this tier one of saving money is making my own coffee at home when I work from home. Comes out to about 29 cents I calculated, which can't really beat that, but I am happy to pay for a coffee if I'm out and about or meeting a friend or working at a cafe. All right, so tier two, when I'm not ordering groceries on Amazon Fresh, the closest actual grocery store to me is, I wish, I wish it was a Trader Joe's, but it's not, it's a Whole Foods, which I know it sounds bougie, but honestly, the prices at Whole Foods have actually got a lot better since Amazon acquired them, specifically for the store brand, the 365 brand items. Of course, Whole Foods still has its fair share of specialty items that are super expensive, but when I'm just buying yogurt, eggs, bread, milk, you know, stuff like that, the 365 items are usually pretty reasonable, only a little bit more expensive than Amazon Fresh prices. The only reason this is in my tier two is because it doesn't have that huge convenience factor of having it delivered right to your doorstep, although that can be an option if you choose Whole Foods instead of Amazon Fresh. I personally just don't do that. So since I only shop at Whole Foods in person, that means that I'm lugging back everything in my arms slash in my backpack, so I can't buy a ton at once. However, I actually think there is something enjoyable about going to that grocery store and checking out the offerings and feeling the fruits. Feeling the fruits? Seriously, Taylor? You know, I actually do enjoy that part a little bit. But yeah, I never thought Whole Foods would be a money saver, but here we are. Tier three would be when I don't cook, so when I buy prepared food or go to a restaurant. When I just eat at home and I'm not cooking, I admittedly usually order Chipotle from Grubhub or Uber Eats. I use promo codes if I can find them, including my own promo codes. So there's really no money saved using this method, but there is time saved, and sometimes I am happy to pay for that convenience. For instance, if I'm on a roll writing the outline to a video, and it would be more detrimental to interrupt that flow to get up and cook myself a meal 
meal than to pay $20 to get a hearty Chipotle bowl from door to door, I'll do it. In fact, as I wrote the outline to this very video, I was in a flow and so I ordered Chipotle on Grubhub to not interrupt my writing. So you see my spending philosophy poking through here a bit where I value the productive time saved more than the money saved from cooking at home. As for going out to get food with friends, I am not a huge foodie, so I'm not really one to initiate going to a new place that ends up being kind of expensive. But if a friend invites me, I'm happy to go because I consider that a valuable experience with my friend. So while I could save money by suggesting a cheaper option, I totally just let it rip sometimes and don't let myself worry about it. So to summarize this food section, the ways that I actually save money are by buying groceries and cooking at home, specifically by buying them on Amazon Fresh and having them delivered for free to my doorstep, or by buying the 365 brand items at Whole Foods. And when I buy prepared food, I generally just seek out reasonably priced salads and sandwiches that are near me. The things I don't do are buy actual groceries from those corner markets because yes, while they're very convenient, they're typically pretty expensive. And finally, I just don't end up going to that many expensive dinners because it's just not one of the things that I love doing. If you live or once lived in New York City and you have other creative ways to save money on food, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there are tons of hacks out there that I just don't know about yet. The next category is transportation, which is the only category where you will likely be saving money by living here in New York City, and that's because of how accessible the public transport is. I won't spend too long on this. I think the first one is obvious. It's the subway, which is a great way to get around the city for only $2.75, much cheaper alternative to things like Uber, owning your own car or taxis. And not only do you get from point A to point B pretty quickly, but you're bound to get some free entertainment as well. And while I take the subway pretty often, I actually bike even more often using the city bikes that are all around the city. And this could be us, but I just turned 20. I finally got the annual subscription, which costs $185 per year. I got it because I was using enough single pass rides where it made sense to just get the annual subscription. But biking is such a great and affordable way to actually get around and see the city and maybe even get a little workout in depending on what you're looking for. Next way to save money on transportation is by walking a lot. Like right now. Yes, of course I have my days where I'm just working from my apartment and I don't like go outside very much at all. But when I am outside and the weather's nice enough, I almost always opt for walking. Dare I say, I think it's the best way to get around and see the city and to really feel in touch with the neighborhoods that you're exploring. I definitely find myself pulling my phone out to take pictures of corners and street scenes that I think are beautiful or unique in some way. So highly recommend. <laughs> During my long walking days, I always think of that scene in Napoleon Dynamite where Uncle Rico just hands over his keys to his van to Kip and he's like, I'm better on foot anyway. <laughs> I just get really tickled by that. Okay, so besides the obvious subway, biking, and walking, there is one more method that is a cheaper alternative to Uber, and that is curb, which is like Uber for taxis. You can schedule to have that taxi pick you up at a certain time, so you lock in the price when you schedule a taxi, so it's not metered and it's not subject to surge pricing at the last minute. It's not quite as reliable as Uber or Lyft in my experience, but it is a cheaper alternative to those surged Uber prices. And another slightly less known form of transportation that I don't do nearly enough, and it's right up my alley, but it's the New York City Ferry and and it's only $2.75. So it's not only a great way to get around, but also one of the best ways to see views of the New York City skyline and the Statue of Liberty for literally less than $3. So I save a lot of money using these options over just taking Ubers all the time, but full transparency, I think you guys know that I do take Ubers if I deem it the safest option or if I'm willing to pay for the convenience in that moment. Next category is expenses and travel. And this is the area where I have fewer saving habits because it's the category that I splurge the most in. But there are definitely still some things that I do. So first is to not underestimate the power of sharing. I just got back from a long Labor Day weekend in Austin, Texas with 16 of my friends where we shared a 7,000 square foot mansion with a huge yard, pool, jacuzzi, cinema room as an Airbnb. Sounds extravagant, right? It was. Yet it only ended up being about $100 per person for each night because we split it that many ways. So sharing is huge when it comes to things like that. But as for other experiences that are more New York City related, I would say do not underestimate how fun really simple things can be. Like taking a bottle of wine to Central Park with some friends and laying on a picnic blanket, taking the ferry for $2.75 to get great views of the New York City skyline, going on long walks through your favorite neighborhoods, or by going to Chipotle to get an affordable meal and then going out afterwards and using the saved money on drinks. I think a lot of people envision New York City as a bunch of expensive dinners and clubs. And that's there if you want it, but it definitely doesn't always have to be that. So these are just some things that I do that unconsciously end up saving me quite a bit of money in this category. And the final category is stuff. So clothing, hygiene products, stuff that I buy on Amazon. So first and foremost, I just try to be more intentional with the stuff that I buy these days because I just don't have an excess of space in my apartment. Pretty spacious for what it is, but as much as I would like to have, you know, a keyboard so I can play piano in New York, 
I just don't really have the space for it. And the same goes for clothes. I have finite closet space, so I just try to be more intentional with the items that I buy. But one way that I do save money when I buy clothes is by thrifting them. You guys know, maybe. I've always been a thrifter and New York City has some amazing thrift shops that I have been meaning to check out. And the rest of the stuff that I buy, like shampoo, skincare products, I usually just order that on Amazon. But here is one tip. If you have the Amex Platinum, you can get a free subscription to Walmart Plus, which gives you free delivery on all orders. So I use that to have toilet paper, paper towels, laundry detergent, stuff like that shipped right to me. If you wanna get the Amex Platinum, my referral code is in the description and then we both get a bunch of signup points. So those are the tips and tricks that I use to save money here in New York City. Please let me know your hacks in the comments down below because I could use all the ones I could get. Pretty please hit the like button if you found this helpful or entertaining and subscribe for zero dollars. And until next time, turtle out. Also, did you find a turtle Easter egg? Can I still film? It's been a while. Ugh, things are off to a rocky start. <laughs> really? Right now? <laughs> All right, at least you made it quick. Ah, blah, blah. Filming right here is a whole nother level of I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Proud of myself. All right.